Hello, I'd like to welcome you to A Healthier You. I'm Larry Macon, Jr., pastor in Mount Zion, Oakland Village, and I'm also the co-host of the show, It's About You, on WKYC Channel 3, where weekly I recognize people that are doing great things in our community. However, this web series is about your health. Yes, it's about you, especially during the pandemic as a leader in the community. I felt compelled to make sure that the latest information on health gets to you and goes right to you. So these interviews are about making sure that you're checking up on your health and you have all the latest information. And today I'm speaking with Dr. Kyle Scarberry, a urologist at University Hospitals. So what's our topic for today, Dr. Scarberry? Well, I thought we would talk about men's health in general and men's sexual health this is an area of a particular interest of mine and I think is an important area to, to men's overall health. Great. And so you're a urologist, of course. And so as we go into talking about that type of health, uh, what is a urologist? So a urologist is a surgeon. We have specialized training specifically in the urinary tract. So that's the kidneys down to the ureters and the bladder where the urine is stored. And then we have a, a special emphasis in the men's reproductive tract as well. Although certainly lots of urologists uh, treating women with, um, with uh, specific concerns for women and their urinary health too. Gotcha. And so what conditions do you treat mostly as a urologist? So, you know, as a urologist, we get, you know, 10 years of training after college. So four years of medical school and six years of training um, in, in surgery. I did my training here at University Hospitals in Cleveland, um, you know, which is home for me. And we treat a number of conditions. So most common things you see like a general urologist for would be kidney stones, which are uh, quite common and very debilitating if you've ever had one. So uh, our stone patients are urologists, usually their best friend. Um, prostate uh, therapies in terms of prostate blockage resulting in urinary conditions or even prostate cancer. We are kind of the lead um, management guys for any symptoms related to that. And then we also do men's fertility services. So whether uh, you're a man and you're trying to have a child and you're having uh, trouble with that or you're done having kids and want to have a vasectomy, have a procedure done, um, we're the surgeons that manage um, uh, those sort of things as well. My specialized training, I spent a year um, doing uh, fellowship training down in Wake Forest on men's reconstructive urology as well as men's uh, sexual health. Mm -hmm. So certainly younger men who experience, you know, scar tissue in their urethra and may have trouble urinating, I would offer them surgical therapies to fix that. And certainly anybody who's had, um, you know, problems with erections, whether it be after therapies for prostate cancer or um, otherwise, you know, or erectile dysfunction in general, which is a very common problem. Um, I help to manage that in, in all sorts of ways. Wow. So why should these men come into the hospital and, and get, you know, checked with a urologist? So, so, you know, men in general don't like seeing the doctor. I know that I don't like seeing the doctor. I don't like taking medications and, 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 and maybe you have a, had a similar experience, but we know that in, you know, Cleveland every year, there's, you know, 250,000 fewer men seeing a doctor than women. Um, mm -hmm. And certainly men have their own particular health concerns and have a lot of good reasons to go and see a doctor. So mm -hmm. if you're age 50 or older and you haven't seen a doctor, get in to see somebody because there's lots of important health screenings you need to do. There's uh, all kinds of conditions that could be going on that you wouldn't even have symptoms from, but wouldn't know about it that are going to go a long way in terms of helping improve your, your um, health overall. So I encourage men in that age range to, uh, to at least see a primary care doctor and get put into our health system. Um, sort of from the urology, sort of the, the specialized uh, side of things we do, um, problems with sexual health. So men experiencing uh, that their erections aren't as good as they used to be uh, mm -hmm. when they were younger. Uh, maybe they're having trouble, you know, keeping or maintaining the erection in order to have successful intimacy with their partner um, mm -hmm. is always uh, a sign that you should get in to see a doctor for a couple of reasons. One is that there's great therapies for this. We can always fix problems uh, that are associated with uh, men's erectile health, but the erections are a kind of complicated medical process and could be a sign of underlying medical conditions that shouldn't be ignored. If you think about um, the male erection, it's dependent on good blood flow, and the arteries that supply that area are smaller than the arteries that supply blood flow to the heart. So if you're starting to experience problem with blood flow in that area, it could be a sign that maybe, you know, five, 10, 20 years down the road, you're at risk for a heart attack. And there's things we can do now that we can evaluate you for to make sure that we're optimally managing your health to prevent, you know, uh, even uh, catastrophic problems like a heart attack or stroke later on in life. Wow. What are most of the underlining reasons that you're seeing when it comes to uh, men's poor overall health? Um, so, you know, certainly, 
conditions that can lead to uh, cardiovascular disease or problems with men's sexual health. Uh, mm -hmm. One is smoking. And we know that's, you know, related to cancer and lung disease. Everyone's very well aware of that. Uh, mm -hmm. But I still see quite a few men who are using tobacco and mm -hmm. they're not really aware of the effect that that can have on their um, sexual health as well. And mm -hmm. I, I've seen, I have a lot of patients who are using tobacco, even though they're diabetic and that, that puts them at extreme risk for multiple medical problems. Um, so I spend a lot of time in my clinic, even though I'm a surgeon and, and trying to fix um, problems uh, related to uh, the urinary tract or, or men's sexual health. I'm trying to get guys to cut back on smoking uh, mm -hmm. as well, because that can that puts you at risk for a lot of these urologic cancers that people don't talk about that much. Bladder cancer can be very severe, very devastating, and, and no one really knows that it's kind of the sixth most common cancer in men and mm -hmm. uh, is, is due to smoking. So uh, obesity is another uh, problem. Certainly, you know, people are struggling with their weight and exercise now more than ever uh, with, the, with the pandemic going on. And uh, I'm seeing plenty of people who are uh, getting off the wagon when it comes to taking care of themselves uh, in terms of getting exercise, trying to maintain a healthy diet. And uh, there's a lot of sort of interventions that can be done earlier on to prevent, you know, problems uh, down the road. Wow. D, so I, I see the link with smoking, but are there any other things that men are doing that could be affecting their health overall and also sexually? Um, other important things is, uh, can be hormonal health. So, mm -hmm. um, you, you certainly hear about men getting diagnosed and treated with low testosterone. Mm -hmm. And I, I think sometimes seeing a urologist or seeing a, a specialist who focuses on, on men and their, and their health can kind of help determine whether or not testosterone values really are low or whether they can be, um, adjusted with ways that aren't just getting testosterone injections, uh, at a clinic. Um, so, I certainly always do a comprehensive evaluation, especially if, I, if there's a younger man without many other medical problems who's experiencing problems with their sexual health to make sure their hormonal health is in good balance too. Um, and then uh, certainly, um, you know, any anything else going on, any other health conditions. I think um, now we're seeing a lot of problems with men's mental health, um, especially with the pandemic. You're isolated from family members. You may not be um, getting as much exercise and social interaction as you like. And we're seeing more and more men um, with symptoms of anxiety and depression. Those, those things, um, you know, the male sexual response and sexual health is a very complicated process, whether it's, it's hormonal, uh, medical, cardiovascular, but there's also that emotional and psychi uh, psychological component to it that's important and, and shouldn't be ignored. Men who are experiencing symptoms of depression, anxiety, um, you know, maybe I'm not going to be the person ultimately that's going to treat you for that, but I'll make sure you get seen by a specialist who does. And that's, that's part of why, um, at university hospitals, we've developed uh, plans to, to open this comprehensive men's healthcare setting. Uh, mm -hmm. So even though uh, urologists are kind of leading the charge, you know, it, um, you know, we're sort of surgeons and we deal with very specialized things, mm -hmm. but we want to make sure that we have good colleagues in primary care um, and, and, and places like that that can make sure men get control of their health, you know, from top to bottom for, for anything that could be going on. Wow. Well, Dr. Scarberry, I really appreciate you. Uh, for making sure that our men are, are safe and are healthy. And before we go up, there's just a few tips that you'd like to give our men regarding their health. Uh, you can just deliver that right now for us. Sure, of course. I think, you know, right now it's hard to focus on much else besides staying safe from uh, COVID-19. And I think yeah. um, men tend to be a little bit more reluctant than, than others in terms of wearing a mask and taking those safety precautions. But, but uh, I think wearing masks is important not just for your health, but mostly for those around you. There's always a chance that you could have the virus, have gotten it, not really have symptoms yet, and then spread it to loved ones or family members. So anytime I see some, somebody wearing a mask, I think you know, that person's doing the right thing for their community or for their family. It's not so much about you know, worrying about your own uh, personal safety and health, although that's uh, important too. And I think anybody who is experiencing sexual health concerns, it's, it's safe to come back and see the doctor right now. Um, we're seeing patients you know, virtually or in person, depending on uh, how things are going and if you had problems with your sexual health that you would like to get evaluated for there's there's always good treatments whether there's uh, medications um, injection therapies uh, some things are easier than others but even surgical therapies there's always ways to fix um, men's problems with uh, with erections and sexual health so you know come by and see one of our doctors and we'll make sure we do everything in a, in a safe manner and um, and uh, get you taken care of well, I like that. And you've heard it right from uh, Dr. Scarberry's mouth that it can be fixed. Uh, that's good and enlightening to know. And again, I thank you for all your work with the university hospitals. Thank you for expanding our knowledge and sharing with us 
about what the hospital is doing to make a healthier uh, you. And so that's our segment for this week, but uh, I'd like for you to make sure you keep up with me on social media and continue to look at all the resources that we're putting together for the community. Also, make sure you go to my website at LarryMakingJr.com or for further information regarding health in your community, call University Hospitals, get checked today. Don't, don't forget that good health equals good wealth. Um, so thank you again, Dr. Scarberry, for all your help and all that you do at University Hospitals. Thank you, Larry. Thanks so much for having me. I appreciate what you're doing for the community. Thank you.